we looked at the backgrounds of 90,000 people who have served in the intelligence, in the law enforcement, and the military since 9-11, looking at a post-9-11 generation of graduates who have top secret clearances. We calculated the top 100 schools that we call the most militarized schools in America. The funny thing about the list is that not one liberal arts school that ranks in the top 100 na nationwide is on the list. So. There's no overlap whatsoever between what are considered to be the best academic colleges in America and the top 100 militarized schools in America. What does that say about the intelligence community? What does it say about how smart the U.S. government is? What does it say about the national security state? 20 of the top 100 schools that feed the intelligence community are online diploma mills. It's a bunch of online schools which serve the federal government's skill set. And these universities, I, I can't look at it any other way. They're essentially on a gravy train of federal money. Billions of dollars in research money every year. That's a significant profit center. That's like sports for those universities. At the end of the Vietnam era, there were 100 people who carried guns who were the shooters of war, if you will to every one intelligence analyst. Today, that number is reversed. It just so happens that today the infantry is people who are sitting at a keyboard. Of 90,000 people, less than 100 have a degree in Middle East studies. There's no evidence whatsoever that international relations or history or any subject that we might associate with being smarter about the world is represented in this group. This group is a group of IT-capable management geeks, bureaucrats who are running a big, giant machine. It shows that this is just a world of, of mediocrity.